sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Let me explain. Recently, Mena RD, the only two-time Capcom Cup champion, has recently come under some hot water for some comments he made regarding Street Fighter VI on Twitter. Mena RD, like I mentioned, the only two-time Capcom Cup champion ever in the history of Street Fighter, is also the winner of CEO 2023, the largest open bracket Street Fighter VI major to date over a thousand competitors entering that tournament. Mena RD came out on top. He recently came under some scrutiny and some hot water for his comments on Twitter saying, I'm having the same experience four players, Street Fighter 4 players, had in Street Fighter 5. Street Fighter 6 is the scrubbiest Street Fighter I played. Hope it keeps getting better like five year by year. Now, he later goes on to refer to mostly Drive Rush as the mechanic that's causing him a lot of grief, stating that it's hard to intercept and predict the drive rush incoming and hard to defend against it and this caused a lot of controversy basically a whole crowd of people telling the capcom cup champion the two-time capcom cup champion and the current reigning ceo 2023 champion to get good uh stating that his complaints have no merit and that he's just whining and that you know nothing could possibly be wrong with street fighter 6 isn't that right jojo isn't that right nothing's wrong with street fighter 6 at all and to be fair, there are a couple of reasons for this. I think, for one, Twitter is probably the worst place on the planet to discuss and air uh, feelings of negativity. It just opens up people for criticizing you without the full context. And he uses a lot of inflammatory language. The scrubbiest game I've played. I hope it gets better. I'm having the same experience four players had in five when a lot of people from Street Fighter 4 were heavily critiquing Street Fighter 5 in the first couple of years and many players dropped off and stopped playing the game. It's, you know, it feels salty to the core when reading this tweet. So I totally understand the negative response. Twitter, not a great place to air these kind of feelings. Um, and also maybe some context. This was tweeted on 1044 p.m. July 13th. And two minutes later, we see the tournament results from Casa online tournament, a, a great online tournament weekly. And there's Mena in second place to Knuckle Dude Dang. 10.46 p.m. July 13th. So he did immediately tweet this out after losing an online tournament to Knuckle Dew and another uh, Capcom Cup champion and amazing player. So yeah, maybe the moment of venting on Twitter was salt-fueled, but there is a core of maybe legitimate criticism to Mena Artie's claims here. I don't think they're expressed in the most uh, you know conducive and productive manner especially using twitter as the platform it's just a terrible place to talk about these kinds of things um but he was getting torn up everyone was telling him to get good you're obviously just complaining because you're bad at street fighter 6 meanwhile shortly after tweeting this he goes on to go win his next major at gommel and has seen multiple tournament wins in online tournament brackets so nothing but competitive success for mena so i think he is getting good i think there's a bit of a disconnect between some more casual members of the fgc and onlookers who don't understand that often competitive players vent their frustrations about game mechanics while also utilizing them to the most effective ability and understanding how to counter them so uh you can both criticize game design while also excelling at the game um but yeah i mean i understand why people had a negative response to this and most people, or not most, but many people just laughed off Mena as being salty and needing to get good. Until yesterday, when this bombshell dropped from Daigo the Beast Umehara. We have this video from FGC Translated, translating a clip from one of Daigo's streams. And the chat brings up, Mena RD said Street Fighter 6 is very scrubby. Hmm, <laughs> I think they did that on purpose. That's what the developers wanted. <laughs> no disagreement. No saying, wow, why would Mena say that? He just needs to get good. <laughs> I think that's intended. I think that's what the developers wanted. Uh, now, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert in the Japanese language. I know nothing about Japanese, so I understand that the nuances between a slang word like scrubby and whatever the equivalent might be in Japanese might be lost. So there's a lot of subtlety there in the way we communicate that might not be translating right away. And this is also an off-the-cuff statement from Daigo on stream, so I'm not going to take his word as gospel as his fully fleshed out finalized thoughts on the topic. But he immediately agrees with the sentiment that the game is scrubby. Now, I think he might be implying that the game is volatile, but it's just interesting to see the immediate agreement from someone whose opinion is well-respected, Daigo. If Daigo said something, it's law on the FGC. This is how it operates. He's built the rapport. He's built the legacy 
Um, he is the face of the FGC and the Street Fighter community, especially. So what his what he says carries a lot of weight. Meanwhile, Mena, uh, he gets a lot of flack for things that I think are not even that controversial, but people take it too seriously. I think there's still a subsection of the community that doesn't respect Mena and his accomplishments and views his accomplishments as luck, even though he's the only two-time Capcom Cup champion and dominating the North American scene right now. So I don't understand where that's coming from, but you know, you got to earn your uh, earn your stripes the hard way. And oh, I guess maybe in, in 10 years time, the FGC will learn to appreciate how great he's been. Uh, but that's what the developers wanted. Taigo goes on to talk about this though in detail. They think that'll help new players get into Street Fighter 6. Tale as old as time. Didn't we hear this with Street Fighter 5? You know, anyone can be the next Daigo. Uh, this has been a, a continuous design philosophy for fighting games is to simplify them. Now, I don't think Street Fighter 6 is an overly simple game by any means, but I do agree to an extent that certain mechanics are extremely strong offensively with little counterplay. I think Drive Rush in some situations, it's extremely easy to implement while being extremely difficult to defend against and it kind of says hey be the person to assert yourself first so that you can get the advantageous offensive position um because there's little to no defending against it in a lot of situations there is counterplay and we are still getting better at the game so i'm not gonna say there's none but that's currently kind of the state of the game and a lot of top players have talked about that not saying the game is bad not saying that the better player can't win more consistently it's just something to keep in mind about how the game does operate so what's the problem if a game is very scrubby so he doesn't say this in the sense of so who cares well if it's scrubby who cares he goes on to actually explain the um, implications of a scrubby game in a competitive environment from a professional player standpoint, it's a problem because you can't prove your actual skills in short matches. I love how like the different discourses start to fuse together here because what Daigo's about to bring up is the age old first to two versus first to three discussion. Now I have videos on my channel discussing this and discussing the potential uh, tournament formats that we could be investigating and saying how there are issues with tournament formats that we've been utilizing for 20 plus years and haven't grown from that. And he's bringing it up right now. So we go from Street Fighter 6 being scrubby to first to two versus first to three. Daigo is just, he should be a content creator. I mean, he should primarily be doing his YouTube. He's hitting all the big topics all at once. You won't get a consistent results with first to two or first to three. <laughs> <laughs> from the man himself i mean he's speaking generally right if a game is scrubby which i i feel like he, uh maybe someone in the comments could help me out with uh maybe a different interpretation of this translation um so i'm just relying on what fgc translate is saying here but scrubby seems also to be uh, substituted here could, could be substituted here with volatile a volatile game you won't get consistent results in first to two or versus first to three all we need to do is play longer matches keep the game the way it is for newer players and change the way tournaments have been run oh my goodness daigo i love to hear it i'm telling you i have several videos on my channel discussing how we have been so stuck in the past with our tournament formats first to two double elimination is a byproduct of necessity, right? We have so many people who enter our open bracket tournaments that we have to, you know, facilitate getting a whole tournament done. You have uh, 500 to now 7,000 plus people all under one roof for one weekend. How do you get those matches all run uh, and whittle that down to one person at the top in a reasonable amount of time and with, you know, the supplies that you have on hand with the actual setups that you have available with the volunteers you have available it's a logistics question that's what determines our tournament rule sets it's not what is the most uh accurate for determining who is the best player on that day or in that weekend right we make concessions to satisfy a few metrics right logistics uh the competitive integrity and also entertainment value right a big part of why we do tournaments is to entertain people who view the tournaments as well so those are the main three pillars of what you choose when designing a tournament and for the most part i think we value logistics and entertainment factor 
a bit more than competitive integrity. And we've been doing that for a long time in the FGC by doing only first to two open bracket double elimination, right? Uh, it doesn't allow for extending the set length because you have to prioritize getting enough matches done. When in reality, it, it sounds harsh to say, but a lot of the people who enter open bracket tournaments are more casual players. They should have a place to compete and they should have uh, you know, some a lot of priority in tournaments because they are the ones mostly funding tournament brackets. But the reality is it comes at the cost of you know the top 0.001% who have just a, you know, there's a razor th thin margin of skill gap between them. They have to play in a more volatile environment to support the infrastructure to keep more lower level and casual players who are the people funding this. I don't, don't, please don't get it twisted. I'm not ragging on players who are more casual. They are extremely important to the FGC ecosystem. They are the FGC ecosystem, but it, it's a reality. But you, you have to sacrifice some things in order for the logistics to work out. To get everyone in and out of the venue in that one weekend. Take Street Fighter 2 Turbo. You should play at least a first to five in Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Playing a first to one with that game is insane. You throw one fireball, the opponent jumps, and that's your tournament, right? So don't think this is just about modern games. He's also referring to the OG, the legacy game, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, saying it should be at least first to five because the, the damage in that game is so high. It's true. Someone jumps your fireball one time, they can instantly stun you and kill you in that game. It's extremely volatile. Uh, and this is coming from Daigo, who's been competing since the beginning. And keep in mind, Japan has been actually in a lot of ways, the most, the biggest proponents of these volatile tournament formats, think back to SBO, Super Battle Opera days. It used to be first to one single elimination team tournaments, right? Like this, the, the Japan region has actually been very steeped in competition where it was extremely volatile first to one competition. It was mostly the North American scene that was proponents of double elimination, first to two and first to three and top eight, right? So uh, it's not like he's speaking from experience in terms of, oh, this is what we do culturally in the Japanese scene. No, he's just saying based on his analysis, it's too volatile to determine who is the stronger player, right? And he's talking about a game that has very difficult execution. So it's not just about, uh, you know, the game being easy to play. Street Fighter 2 is not easy to play, in my opinion. Uh, it's just very volatile. Even amongst the highest level players, it's extremely volatile because one mistake can instantly cost you the round. And there's inherent variance in fighting. It's a huge part of fighting games is variance in guessing. And that normalizes over a longer period of time where people who, uh, who consistently make better guesses will end up winning more often. But in a shorter set, you're obviously going to get more volatile results. And the more volatile a game, uh, you know, it, 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 it behooves itself to have longer tournament formats in order to give the more consistent player. <laughs> you threw one fireball, I got jumped, game over. GG's, thanks for playing. Imagine that in this era of competition where top level players uh, pay either out of pocket themselves or the lucky few have sponsors who pay thousands upon thousands of dollars to fly them across the planet to enter tournaments and they play in first to two tournament brackets like this. It's just... Uh, once again, I think the scale of the stakes has vastly outgrown the tournament formats in terms of competitive viability in a lot of ways. And uh, yeah, it, it does vary based on the game. Some games are less volatile than others, especially lower damage games. And those can are, are more suitable for uh, shorter set formats. But Daigo is definitely making the argument that Street Fighter VI is a game that is suitable for longer tournament formats to have a bit more competitive consistency. <laughs> Tournaments do have enough time to run first to three. If this doesn't change, it's because the tournament organizers. プレイヤー側がその考え方とかも知識とかもすげえ先行してて
あこれそっかこれやって対応するんだみたいなうわーちゃんと考えられてんなって感じでプレイヤーが結構うなってる状況なのよつまりプレイヤー優勢からむしろ作る側優勢な感じになってきてるのよっていう時代に変わってきて He is commenting on the rat race that occurs between players and developers. The goal of most fighting game players is to exploit the game engine to the best of their ability to find the cheapest strategy in order to win. If that means using exploits, bugs, role canceling CVS2, whatever the hell Vega is doing in Street Fighter 2,、uh, you know, anything they can find, you know, the broken, the beautiful. Uh, accidental broken mess that is Marvel vs. Capcom 2. The players are racing to break the game to their advantage, and developers then have to patch it. So, in the older days, you know, they couldn't really patch games to that degree. They'd have to release completely separate physical hardware versions. And then, you know, in the digital era, you know, they're a bit slower to patch things out. And it has been a rat race between players and developers. But he's saying Street Fighter 6 is this extremely well designed game. And we even just saw that Rashid released. With his broken、uh, level two, and Capcom patched that within a day. If this was an older generation of fighting games, Rashid would have released with that broken level two that did infinite chip damage with a proper setup, and it would have just been the game. <laughs> it would have just been the way we played.、Uh, so now developers are definitely trying to rein in the capabilities of the game engine to play more in line with their vision. Whereas before, things were much more like a sandbox. The developers would have some vision of what the game would play like, and then the players would show them, hey, You, we're going to show you things that you didn't even know were possible within your own creation. It was kind of like the sandbox that was created, and players would go off in directions that the, the great creator above could never have even had envisioned. And it's definitely not like that anymore. So, developers are, I agree with Daigo, one step ahead, especially since the Street Fighter V era. They've reined in the capabilities of fighting games、um, to play more in line with their design without、uh, the gamers breaking too much. The vision of the developers. But the tournament organizers are left behind in this era,、uh, area. No matter how you think of it, this game isn't for first to two. He's putting his foot down. We should not be doing first to two for Street Fighter VI. It's not the best competitive format. And you know what? I agree. I agree, man. I still don't understand why、uh, we can't、uh, grow from our current infrastructure and try to find more tournament formats. I talk about this all the time.、Uh, I think we need more ways to grow within the tournament scene. I understand the issue of logistics and having enough time for everybody to compete, but then maybe we should have other formats besides just open bracket formats. Uh, Street Fighter League, I think, is trying to remedy that, but I still have some issues with Street Fighter League. Street Fighter League, for one, is invite only, so you have to be kind of Illuminati to get invited to it. It's a team format, which I don't think should replace the primary goal of, or the primary format of individual competition. Teams, I kind of like, I kind of also don't really care for it as much as individual、uh, placements and competitions. And、uh, yeah, there's no way to really qualify for Street Fighter League, but it is a start because. Uh, players, it's still sort of a you know, based on your actual skill if you actually get invited to Street Fighter League to a degree.、Um, but those sorts of closed、uh, competitions allow for doing longer set formats because you don't have to have thousands of players compete, you have a smaller pool of players to compete. So I always recommend or suggest hey, what if we had more ways to funnel players up? Into different leagues, have the open bracket qualifiers be just open for anybody. And then if you place top three, you funnel up to the C League. And then there is a closed off、um, uh, you know, uh, league that players qualified for in the C League. And the top three for, after the season qualify for the B League and the A League and have, a, have an actual ladder to climb so that we have the ability to do longer set formats and maybe round robin or different sorts of formats. In those closed leagues, because you'll have less players within them, but it will, it'll still be earned via open qualifiers.、So、I don't know, it's just an idea that I had brainstorming, but there's just no evolution in the format. So, because we have to have everybody, Daigo to Johnny Donuts, compete in the same venue on the same weekend, they're all subject to the same rule sets, which I don't think makes sense. I think it's time for Uh, the top end to be afforded a little bit more competitive integrity and legitimacy by having things like longer set formats or at least extend first to three beyond just top eight. I don't know why we can't do top 64 or something of that nature.、Um, you know, after you、uh, get through a large portion or、uh, the first couple rounds of the bracket, you eliminate 50% of the tournament after two rounds, right? So by that point, can't we start doing first to three at some point? 
I understand it's a lot to ask for tournament organizers, so uh, I'm not going to say it's an obvious thing to do, but these are the issues that we face. It's a balance between logistics and feasibility with tournament organizers and the type of format that the game deserves in order to get a little bit closer to having more consistent results. Chat brings up the counterpoint, but your Beast Cup is first to two, and Taigo counters, yeah, it's a casual tournament. If it's a tournament with prize money, I'd make it completely different. In fact, I have another tournament planned, and it's totally different. There's something at stake, I set different rules. Casual tournaments first to two is fine, even first to one is fine for casual tournaments. You can play online, and it's free to participate. It's a free online tournament with no prize. The first one or first two are fine. Talking about important tournaments being first to two, like Evo, like CPT qualifying tournaments. Um, all of our important competitive events are first to two. Uh, Evo is going to be first to two until I believe top eight, and then you know your CPT qualifying tournaments they're first to two until top eight as well. When when they finally become first to three. So our tournaments with the most stakes are first to two. They really are. Even Capcom Cup, I believe, last year with the group stages has been first to two. So yeah, uh, first to two seems to be the, the set format because it's what we've been doing. <laughs> and maybe that's a bit outdated. And maybe that's a bit outdated. Glad Daigo brought this up. Just because it's the way we have been doing things doesn't mean it is the way we have to be doing things. I totally agree with this assessment that uh, we could uh, benefit from having different competitive formats. And I know that veered away from the topic of being scrubby, but I think it, it speaks to the same sort of sentiment. When a game is volatile, you uh, would want longer formats in order to reduce the amount of volatility in the results so he agrees to meta rd's i think core tenant which is that the game is volatile like i said maybe the the scrubby uh terminology is lost in translation and the tone and spirit of the message isn't quite the same between the two but i understand menace points i i do think that he made the mistake of trying to communicate that after losing a tournament set on twitter and i totally agree with daigo's assessment here uh, I hope that people start considering, or the tournament organizers start considering um, how we can better suit tournament formats for more volatile games. Other games like Guilty Gear Strive, people uh, switched to first to three after the first month. They said this game is way too fast and volatile. They made it first to three. I feel like Street Fighter is a bit more steeped in legacy than Guilty Gear in this sense, and is very resistant to change. And yeah, we see that from all of our competitive tournament formats. I hope we change a little bit. I hope we add more variety and more competitive formats in the future so that we can satisfy the needs of all parties more effectively, right? Satisfy the needs of players just getting into the competitive scene and satisfy the needs of players who are lifetime professionals who are trying to make a living with consistent tournament results that value their time and skill, right? I hope we can bridge that gap rather than forcing everybody to have a suboptimal experience by always playing under the same conditions, right? Lower level players who first enter a tournament, they go 0-2 and then they're done. They have nothing else to do for the weekend. Was that really a great experience for them when they get very little matches in? And then at the same time, that forces top level players to have to play first to two matches and experience more uh, volatility in their tournament results. And, you know, that also impacts that their potential bottom line, right? So I think it, there could be different formats and different approaches that could help make the entire community more happy with how we organize things. And I'm glad Daigo brings that up. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments and also let me know what you think about this topic. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.